so much for joining us today for this really momentous occasion for the city of Greenfield. We couldn't ask for a more beautiful uh, weather day. Uh, we're going to kick off our ceremony shortly. I just want to recognize um, some of the terrific people here. We have our state delegation, state rep uh, Natalie Blay, state rep Susanna Whips, and state senator Joe Comerford. Thank you so much for being attended. We also have representation from uh, State Senator Elizabeth Warren's office, Mark Antonio Williams. Thank you so much for joining us. We also have representation from uh, Congresswoman McGovern's office, Kobe. Thank you so much for joining us today. And I just want to recognize we also have our former mayor, Roxanne Wiedegardner, here today. Thank you so much for joining us. So before we get started, uh, I'd like to welcome everyone to stand uh, in recognition of the National Anthem. co-chair of the Fire Station Building Committee, Butch Hawkins. Thanks everybody. Myself along with David Singer are the co-chairs. And um, we've got a fantastic group of people on the uh, building committee. We're in our fifth year. Um, started the process during the middle of the pandemic without a budget, without a site. 
And then we were told we had to build a temporary fire station without a budget, without a site. And uh, constant, you know, problems with the pandemic, the escalation of you know, material costs, services, supply chain issues. Um, Singer, Mayor Weaver, Liz Gilman, uh, Director of Finance, worked really hard with the uh, Ways and Means Committee and City Council to keep running our budgets up to try to keep pace with a constant escalation of, uh, of cost. And uh, even the design team uh, had to redesign down twice for us to try to stay within budget, and it still wasn't enough. And uh, I'm still down for us, but this team did a fantastic job of delivering at this outstanding building. Um, but uh, more importantly, the mayor stepped up with two and a half million dollars of market money, which kept us in play. And uh, that made a real difference. And uh, you know, during the, uh, the opportunity that another committee member had, as uh, Bob said, uh, we looked us up with the USDA, and the mayor, and the fire chief, the design team. We were able to put together a package and some design work in 30 days, only 30 days, to get almost a million dollars in uh, money from the USDA, which um, made a huge difference in this project. So I just want to thank the mayor and uh, all those who worked so hard on it. Um, and we've got a wonderful group of people. Um, you know, Leo Joyce, our OPM, guiding us through some real difficult issues with. Um, with our subcommittees, you know, chaired by Steve Dracovich and David Caratello, um, certifying some 68 subcontractors and 15 general contractors. A very, uh, very challenging, very challenging process. <laughs> Without Neil, I don't think we would have got through it. Um, and David, on the, uh, you know, this subcommittee made up of, uh, of uh, Gene Wall and Jen Stromstad. anything you see here, even, even the color of the facade that the building committee worked on uh, and recommended. So if you see things that you don't like, you can probably blame them on us. And if you see things you like, <laughs> well, we're more than glad to take the credit. Um, so I just want to thank the, the building committee um, for all their work. Like I say, we're on our fifth year. We've been committed. Um, I appreciate everybody that showed up today to do this wonderful building and project. Thank you very much. Before our next speaker, I just want to quickly also acknowledge uh, Western Mass Regional Director for, Director for Governor Moore Healy, Kristen Aleko, has also joined us today. Thank you so much, Kristen. And thank you so much for the uh, next up, we have our Fire Chief, Robert Strain. Thank you, thank you, thank you, everybody, for being here. What a great day, huh? What a great, wonderful day. Years to get us here. The retired guys, uh, the firefighters that are here in the back, the active duty guys, have been waiting for this for a long time. Uh, and uh, so happy to be here. So happy to see so many friends and family. Uh, family of the fire department, friends, fellow fire chiefs, other firefighters, people coming home that have retired and, and have come back and, and welcoming us on this uh, this glorious day. Welcome to 41 Main Street, the home of your new fire department. It's a wonderful day for this department, its firefighters, the citizens, and the visitors of the city of Greenfield. First, let me say that firefighters call this bit, uh, this, this station a house. It's We call it a firehouse, not a fire station. We do this because this is our home. This is our second home. Most of us will spend more time here than we spend at our home. Uh, so we call it a firehouse. And the fact that everybody's here joining us today, uh, we're all family and thank you for being here. This project would not have been possible without the community as a whole. Many city departments and boards 
uh, within this city were involved with the successful completion of this station. From the planning and zoning, to committees such as building construction, the tree committee, the commission for disability access, public safety committee, and all the valuable input that they provided to this project. Our city departments, our finance department, our building official, all the inspectors, the clerk's office, the energy department, the mayor's office, multiple mayor's offices, and multiple city councils had an important part of achieving this amazing day. We couldn't have done it without the community. I want to uh, uh, especially acknowledge our DPW and our central maintenance folks. Their effort made this day possible. It's the dedication and the hard work that made not only this possible, but the very difficult transition for us for the last several years. We appreciate our architect team for providing a link from our past to a bright future. And just like a firehouse on cue, we're going on an emergency call. So you hear it in the background, that's what's happening. So we're going on a fire alarm. Uh, before they go, Turner's Falls Fire has provided us an engine company so our staff could enjoy today. So we give them a round of applause. Thank you very much. We appreciate the architect team for providing a link from a past to a bright future. The fire service is rich with tradition, and we pay our respect to the brave men and women that came before us. A firehouse is a physical representation of our firefighters. A station like a firehouse is strong and steadfast, never wavers and stands proud even during the most difficult times. It is a place that you can count on. The old station stood proud for 85 years. We now stand ready to serve the next 85 years with this brand new fire station. We pay our respect to the past by subtle design features in this modern building. On the front of the building you will see arches. In the middle of the arches are keystones. They came from the old firehouse. <laughs> Along with the keystones are the round windows that came from the old firehouse. And on the apparatus board behind me, there is a fire pole. Uh, and there are old signs uh, that seem a little out of place located throughout the firehouse, but they are a tribute to our past. Even the building number 41 is a tribute to the old house. The old house was 412 Main Street. This was supposed to be 39 Main Street. It got changed to 41. <laughs> we pay tribute to the past at the same time building a state-of-the-art firehouse. We asked, when we asked our priorities, we listed three that we established early on that we use day-to-day -day in this department to, plan, to help with the planning and design. The first one, be safe. This job is a dangerous job. Every aspect of the job carries a level of danger. We needed to building to emphasize this. The design of the building reduces the effects of cancer-causing products that is seen in our profession by limiting contaminants that enter the living space. This is done with a decontamination room, a transition space, gear washers, sink to clean dirty equipment, special intake and air tank and, and exhaust, vehicle capture system, a state-of-the-art notification system that notifies our firefighters of a call that starts low and builds, which has an impact on the overall health of our hearts of our firefighters. <laughs> single living, four living, single four living, non-slip apparatus for, and many, many more safety enhancements within this building. The second priority is to be prepared. Our number one, number one uh, responsibility is to keep our firemen safe, so we can keep all of you safe. The number, the second priority is to be professional. This is accomplished by a beautiful building, purposely built with workspaces, notification displays throughout the building for quicker response, multifunctional spaces such as the training room, conference room that can be used for training classes, as well as the ability for the public meetings to be televised. And these rooms will also function as a citywide emergency operations center and command room during citywide emergencies. We 
we have space to work around and on our fire trucks. And yes, let me be the first to assure you that every truck fits. <laughs> the final priority is to enjoy your time. The building was built with comfort features of our firefighters as well as nice features for the community. From the bee out front to the day room to the kitchen are all examples of providing space that everybody could be proud of and enjoy. This house is the city's house. We want everyone to see it and get pleasure from it. We want to share this, we want to share our past and our future with everyone in the city. We want you to come back in October for the grand opening of our small museum that will be done on the week of fire prevention. We have hired a museum curator and we want to do it right. So it is not open now, but we will open it during fire prevention week and we hope you all will come back at that time. In closing, I have several thank yous I would like to make. First and foremost, I want to thank the citizens again of the city of Greenfield for your commitment to this department. It is truly humbling the outpouring of support towards the Greenfield Fire Department. The building committee for your countless hours of time seeing this project through, especially the leadership of Butch Hawkins and David Singer, former Mayor Wiener Gartner and her finance team, as well as multiple city councils for your unwavering ability to somehow find funding for this project. Our current mayor disorder for seeing this project across the, city, uh, sit the finish line. Congress McGovern's office for assisting and acquiring multiple grants for equipment that we use in the firehouse. Senator Cumberford, Representative Blaze, and Whips for your commitment to the city and emergency services throughout our area. Thank you for everything you do. Neil Joyce and your team from CMS, thank you. Your guidance and oversight was, un was invaluable. H2M and your team who assembled the state-of-the-art design and functionality of this building. This building is beautiful, thank you. Thank you for your design. D.A. Sullivan, for your work done above and beyond what was expected. Dave and Mark, where's Mark? Mark, our foreman out there, outstanding job here every day. You did an incredible job, especially in the final push at the end. Unbelievable what you've accomplished. I cannot thank you enough. Our subcontractors who worked so hard and who are still working to make sure this project is a reality. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If you look at the front of the stage here, there is a sign that we put out front there. That is all the, we tried to capture all the construction workers, but that's all the construction workers that worked on this project signed that banner and will go on our museum. And it's really important that we recognize the work that they did. They did an outstanding job. <laughs> Lastly, I want to take a moment to thank the men and women of the Greenfield Fire Department. We would not be here today if it wasn't for each and every one of you. Your hard work, perseverance, and patience to endure 920 days in a temporary facility, but who's counting, uh, w without disruption of our services and without missing a single call is remarkable. Thank you enough for that, and I am so proud to be your chief. <laughs> Through every challenge and difficulty you, you faced, you stood tall, did what was needed to be done, and you did it with professionalism, respect, and kindness. You, along with our central maintenance team and others, took a parking lot and made a fire station. That's unbelievable. Uh, not only did you make a fire station, you moved a fire station 86 years old, not once, but twice in three years. For that, I say thank you, job well done. You are the epitome and example of public servants.
I would like to, before I close, I would like to thank the Masakio, who we worked, uh, negotiated the purchase of this land. This is a beautiful spot for a firehouse. Thank you very much for that. In closing, I hope that this station will protect our current and future firefighters who have taken an oath to courageously serve our city with honor and purpose. This building, again, will stand as a permanent reminder for those who served before us and afford new opportunities for generations of firefighters to come. This house will build on the legacy that is Greenfield Fire Department, standing for strength, commitment, again, honor and respect for your profession, the department, and the city that we serve. Thank you very much. Thank you all for being here. We have a few more speakers. Thank you. I would just like to say on behalf of CMS, uh, we represent communities across the state. Uh, this community is special, special to us. We worked on a high school project. It was great to be invited back to work on the fire station project. It truly takes a village, and today is a celebration for all of you and you should be very proud of the facility that you have made. Special shout out and thanks to all of the design and construction professionals that make our job look so easy. Um, and I, I just again, thank you to the community for selecting us and we want to make sure that we're welcome back. So we'll see you for the next time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, we have David Goodsell from DA Sullivan and Sons. Good morning and thank you to the City of Greenfield for hosting this event. Uh, I'm going to share a couple personal stories and hope that that illustrates uh, what I'd like to, to exemplify with this. Three years ago when I joined DA Sullivan, um, I came from a, a different contractor and in the interview process it was made clear to me that DA Sullivan, which has been around for now 127 years, was built on reputation. Um, everything put aside in the end, we want to leave with a good name. Uh, my first project that I was involved with was the Greenfield Library. I came up here to help out, and the first meeting, a plate of baked goods was delivered. Oh, this is a great place to work. <laughs> a couple weeks later, we walked out of a meeting, and uh, the current director at the time, Ellen, gave us all a hug on our way out. I wondered, did this get any better? <laughs> Soon after, we were awarded the fire station project, and I thought, oh, geez, the chief's not going to give me a hug. <laughs> The expectations were high, and I think we, I think we delivered. Uh, never did get that hug, Chief. But, <laughs> but I do want to thank the people that we were involved with weekly in meetings, and uh, that really came together and made this a collaborative project. Um, with with CMS, Neil's team, including Tim and Roger, the on-site clerks, they were they were good guys, honest, and and made the job uh, enjoyable to come to. With H two M, Katrina. Uh, Simon and Adam, uh, good collaborative architects, build the one to solve problems. From the city, with Butch, the chief, Peter MacGyver, and uh, well, dozens of subcontractors, guys who again put their head down, have been around for several years and built communities. For the DAS team, um, I want to highlight two people. Cicely, who's here. Cicely is uh, one of uh, the future leaders of DA Sullivan and has really taken on a great job and helped out. And Mark Harrington, our superintendent, who, if anyone has worked with Mark, you love the guy. Several people have come out and said they want to work on DAS jobs if they can work with Mark. Mark's the best. Thank you. He might, he, his speech would have gone 10 times longer. That's why I'm up here, so I can wrap this thing up. But, Mark, you know Mark, you love Mark. Um, you don't want his two week look at it. You don't know. <laughs> Somehow his two week look at it lasts for two weeks. So, it was on. D.S. Sullivan was built, like I said, 127 years ago on, on three values quality, integrity, and respect. We've found over the years that those communities that we partner with, Owners, architects, and subcontractors who share those same values, we become uh, more than just business partners, we become friends. They become relationships that we value and relationships that we want to continue. 
to conclude, last week I sat with the chief at, after our uh, project meeting, and I reminded him of a comment I made in our first kickoff, saying, Chief, you know, the library, they did give us cookies. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember that, Dave. You, you told me I would have got your cookies. Not 10 <laughs> seconds later, a citizen shows up with a pile of homemade fresh chocolate cookies. <laughs> One example of great people doing simple things, but it really pulls off something fantastic. Our hope is that this fire station will, will stand and remind everyone of good people doing good things pulls off a great project. Thank you all. Enjoy the rest of the day. Next up, we have Dennis Ross from H2M Architects and Engineers. Morning. What a great day. What a great building. Um, I started on this 12 years ago with Butch and the Chief, and we looked at how many sites did we look at, Butch? 20, 25 sites. We've been over at Rydell Street, we were over at Wells Street, we, next door, and finally here. Um, so thank you all for helping us. The one thing I do want to say is, as part of a design team, we don't work in a vacuum. All right, there's a lot of people that feed information into us, help us. And I'd like to recognize a few of them, certainly the mayor, and the past mayor, of course. Our committee, the building committee, headed by Butch and David. All the city departments had a hand in this. I can't thank our OPM, CMS, and that for helping us through this. They were great. Working with DA Sullivan was a pleasure. Um, great contractor. Uh, we can't quite match them though. We're only 100 years old. They're like 127, so they got us beat by a little bit. Um, but I would like to recognize on the design team uh, Katrina Pacheco, David Pacheco, Simon, I see you back there, Simon Mandit. Um, <laughs> thank you guys. Town Architects has helped us with the interiors and peer review. Uh, we have CES here who did our mechanical, electrical, plumbing work. Fuss and O'Neill who did the civil and, struck, civil and um, uh, environmental work, I'm sorry. And then, again, I've got to really bring this down to two main people that we really work with constantly, which clearly is Butch and the Chief. And as the Chief mentioned, probably some of the most important things that really happened in this design was taking care of your responders, these people here. All right, their health, safety, and well-being is what matters in this building. Yeah, it's state-of-the-art. Believe me, there's so many things in here we could bore you with with what's state-of-the-art. But the important thing is cancer prevention, keeping cross-contamination away from these folks, Protecting them from sleep deprivation, which, believe it or not, the station is a huge thing. Um, managing both classroom and active training regimens. Why? Because if they don't train when they get there out on the emergencies, you know, they're winging it. We don't want them winging it. We want them well trained. So this building has lots and lots of training regimens built in so they can be here in the firehouse training and not have to go outside when a call comes in. The other thing that we built in is a little bit more subtle. We're trying to promote camaraderie. Why? Because when these folks interact, they all help each other, they teach each other, they take the younger folks, train those younger folks. So everything that we can do in this building to bring the camaraderie in there is things that we've done. And that's anywhere from just how the building flows to not keeping them locked up in a bunk room, for example. So with that, I'm gonna let this go on to the other people who need to speak, but again, this is a huge team effort. And your community and your city councils and all the people that had a hand in this, you're all part of our design team, and I thank you for that. Before we go on to our next speaker, we also want to acknowledge someone who really had a great impact on this project, USDA. Um, I believe they contributed somewhere over a million dollars to the project. Yeah. So to continue with the adage, it really takes a village to make these projects a reality. And we just really want to take a moment to recognize their impact. So thank you to USDA. 
Up next, we have Kobe Gardner-Levin from the Regional Manager of U.S. Representative Jim McGovern. So, hello everyone, and thank you so much um, for all of you being here to mark this special occasion. Uh, first and foremost, I want to extend um, our, our deepest gratitude to the city of Greenfield and the community, including everyone who has supported this project along the way. Because your continuous support has made this state-of-the-art facility a reality, and that's an achievement this entire community should be proud of. I also want to give a special thanks to Mayor DeSorder, Fire Chief Strahan, and their entire teams whose vision and leadership have brought us here to this point, as well as the USDA reps, Project Manager Neil Joyce, and all of the elected officials here who work in partnership with the city. Um, I also want to thank all the contractors and workers who uh, brought their skills and expertise as well. This fire station is going to revolutionize this community, and alongside the new equipment and technology, the facility is going to incorporate historic relics, um, such as the department's original fire pole, as Chief, as Chief Strahan mentioned earlier. And I think that's so critical because as this community builds toward the future, it's important to remember the past, and these relics will remind us of that past each and every day. I also want to reiterate that this fire station's location is going to ensure quicker responses to, emer to emergencies, and even as we all sit here on this beautiful day, I can't help think of the lives in the future that will be saved because of this, and that's something that this entire community should be proud of. This building will make it possible for our firefighters to do their jobs well. And as we, um, and above all, we honor the dedicated public servants who, do, who use this building to save lives and put their lives on the line each and every day they go to work. In the years to come, Congressman McGovern and I look forward to deepening our partnership with Greenfield. And I'm proud to be here today to mark this occasion. This long-awaited project is one that will benefit Greenfield and the surrounding area for decades to come. And it's a special day. I'm honored to be here, and I can't thank you all enough for being here as well. So once again, thank you to the city of Greenfield. Thank you to this community. Thank you. I'd like to welcome to the podium our city council president, John Bonham. It's a privilege to be here today with all of you. This is a historic moment for the Greenfield Fire Department and a much deserved step up in the working conditions for our firefighters. I'm proud of our city. All along, the fire station had the strong support of our citizens and our city council. We are not a wealthy city, yet we prove that we can still do big things. Thank you, Chief Strahan, and all those who worked hard to make this possible. On behalf of the Greenfield City Council, congratulations. Next up, I would like to welcome our Public Safety Committee Chair, David Marshkalatolo. Good morning, thank you. At the big beginning of this endeavor, um, just around when the firefighters were moving from the old to the temporary, I had a conversation with one of them. I can't quite remember who it was, but one of them said, it's gonna be a long haul in that tin can. <laughs> and I said, keep your eyes on the prize. This is the prize right here. I want to thank and congratulate the men and women that serve our fire departments. They keep us safe, they're dedicated to the community, and now they're in a new home. And we're very excited about that. The Fire Station Building Committee. I have a quote, one of my favorite quotes. It's easy to be a critic, but being a doer requires effort, risk, and change. That's what you did, building committee. You stuck to the course, no matter who said what, when and how, you saw the end results, and this is your day as much as it is any other, everybody else's day. So and finally, to the chief. This is a man always looking out for the well-being of his firefighters. Every public safety commission meeting he goes to, he talks about safety. He gives us stories of the heroics of the men and women that serve us every day. His dedication 
to his staff and the community is unwavering. We all congratulate you, and this is a well-deserved result. Getting close to wrapping things up, I just want to mention that Giorgio, uh, next door to us, will be uh, providing food after the ceremonies. They reached out uh, from the kindness of their heart to do this as a, a welcoming gesture to the fire department. Uh, so we just want to take a moment to thank Giorgio. <laughs> next up, I would like to welcome Father Michael Pierce for prayers and invocation. Many thanks have been offered here today, and I offer and add my own a great thanks to uh, Jim for his welcome and hospitality today, to Mayor Denny for her uh, leadership, to the Public Safety Commission, and all those uh, offer thanks today. But in a special way, I also acknowledge the great work and the, and the sacrifice that our public safety officials offer each and every day. Know that you are the answer to many prayers that are raised here in our community. You are the answer when people pray to Almighty God. So thank you in a special way. Thank you for all that you do. Thank you for your sacrifice. And so we gather today to dedicate the opening of this new firehouse to the presence of city officials and honored guests, first responders and lifelong colleagues, neighbors and friends, eager-eyed children, and public safety champions. We invoke the name of all that is good and beautiful true. We do so especially standing before this new edifice of shared work, engaged collaboration, bold vision, and care for our city. We acknowledge the good and hearty effort that went into its planning and construction. We celebrate the beauty before us, <coughs> the beauty of gleaming red chrome and shared spaces for renewal. We recognize the true challenges before us, yet even more true hopes that sustain us. The, the cause of this dedication is the fearsome power of fire. Ancient civilizations imagined a swift-footed caper stealing fire from the gods. Countless wanderers in the wilderness have found solace, sustenance, and security beside fire in weary camps. Modern technologies have harnessed great powers of flame and fusion. Yes, Fire in our hands has heated our homes, forged steel for our cities, fed our feeble bodies, and lighted the darknesses that dare to overshadow us. Yet fire unharnessed has harmed loved ones, devastated livelihoods, and ravaged landscapes. Fire has the power to sustain life. Fire has the power to destroy life. Gracious God, Today, we pray that we may be good stewards of the power entrusted to us, the power of life, the power of love, the power of goodwill. Guide and sustain our fire chief in his continued duties for the protection of our peoples. Shield and protect our firefighters, our first responders, and all personnel in this station and across the city as they face the challenges of the everyday and the many unknowns. Yes, we know that every time you cross these very doors, you face many unknowns. But as you look out into the distance and you look to where you are going, may one thing be perfectly clear. May one thing be truly and wholly known. You are thought of, you are prayed for, you are loved. May that never be forgotten. May that be truly known. For we recognize the great gift and sacrifice that you are offering each and every day. And so we ask that God grace our city officials and community members, low and mighty alike, with perseverance and courage in building up society and an ever vibrant Greenfield. Bless each and every one of us in this, our new fire station, and offer us the great fire of your divine love and stir into flame our will for peace, joy, and goodness forever. We ask this in your holy name. Amen. So again, I'm going to be 
uh, the one that closes and says again to everyone, I am humbled that you're all here to share this day with us. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, this is your house. This is a community's house. Um, and so I would love if you could all join us. I would ask my firefighters uh, if you would go ahead and join me at the ribbon uh, uh, for the ribbon cutting along with the mayor and, and uh, Chairman Hopkins. So uh, we'll do the ribbon cutting. Again, thank you, thank you all for being here. Uh, you all have a special place in our heart, our mutual aid uh, partners and chiefs, friends, uh, mentors that are here. Thank you all for being here. What a great day. Thank you.
that's made to be more of like a